Hello everybody, how are you? This is Andrea and welcome to a new Zodiac Chibis episode. This month it is time for our Virgo friends. Happy birthday to all of you celebrating. I hope you will have or have already had a great time with your family and friends and that you will enjoy this video. As always, let's start with the basic info. To draw, I am using my Wacom Cintiq Companion 2, which is a tablet and computer all-in-one. Then, in terms of software, I use Photoshop for sketching and Adobe Illustrator for coloring. As usual, you can find all the info, including links to the store that sells the equipment, down in the description box. Okay, now that we are done with the introductions, let's chat about this girl. I've read all of your comments and suggestions that you've left in the previous Zodiac video, so I decided to include in her design a flower band and some wings. Alright, it is time for the Q&A. As usual, what I like doing in this video is answering questions that you left on my Instagram, so let's get started! First question is asking how long have I been in Australia and if I plan to move anywhere else. I've moved to Australia shortly after I finished high school, so that is about 12 years ago. At the moment, I don't plan to move anywhere. It is just too complicated and expensive to move to another country. Plus, I really like Australia. At the current stage, I can't really think of any strong enough reason that would make me want to move to another country. But hey, never say never. Things can easily change in the future. The second question is a very common one, so I thought I would answer it again. Basically, do you take face-up commissions? I don't take face-up commissions anymore. Nowadays, I exclusively focus on my own projects. I stopped taking commissions when I started working for Moose in mid-2013. So I've just hit my fourth anniversary since then. There are many amazing face-up artists out there though. I highly suggest checking the Den of Angels forums, which has a marketplace dedicated to face-up artists that offer commissions. You will find pages and pages of customizers offering their services, so I am sure you will be able to find someone that will suit your preferred style and budget. Next question. What made you decide to draw in Illustrator vectors versus roster images? I think that the fact that I can scale my illustrations in any way and not lose any quality is such an appealing feature of vector art. Also, while the workflow and style of Illustrator can feel really dry, I actually really like how technical, clean and organized vector illustrations can be. I also like how easy it is to reuse parts from a previous illustration or modify existing shapes. And that is related to being able to resize any element in any shape or form. You don't need to worry about resolution or scale or anything like that, which is amazing to me. It saves me so much time and I always feel like anything that I draw can always be reused in the future and is not limited to only one project. Next question. When you're drawing or painting, do you listen to music? Sometimes I do, depending on my mood and what I am drawing. So, for example, whenever I draw something for the Zodiac series, I don't feel the need to be in a certain mood to focus. So, I usually stick with listening to Twitch streams of other artists. It is quite motivating working on art alongside other artists. The topics that are discussed are usually relevant and relatable and chill, which is exactly what I need for those long drawing sessions. When I'm out of streams to watch, I like to listen to modern jazz. 
I like the typical cafe style simple jazz music without vocals. It keeps me in a good and relaxed mood. For other types of illustrations, especially when I draw on chibi style drawings, I stick to soft focus radio, which I listen on SoundCloud. I hope this answered your question and thanks again for leaving your comment. All right, next one. How did you learn to do digital art and edit videos as well? Most of it is self-thought, so I simply googled stuff like Photoshop tutorial or After Effects tutorial and started learning from there. Like I mentioned many times before, I liked using Linda and digital tutors whenever I could afford it. But nowadays, there are so many other great places to learn from, such as Skillshare or even here on YouTube. But don't forget that finding information and buying all the tools that you need is really the easiest part of everything. The difficult part of learning a new skill is committing years of practice and not getting discouraged every time things don't go as planned. So yeah, just start somewhere and try not to overwhelm yourself. For example, just because I say that I use three different programs to edit my videos, you don't need to do that to begin creating. Things can be done in many different ways, so begin with the basics. I filmed my very first YouTube video with my super old webcam and I used books as my tripod. But it was a start and it worked and I slowly learned things and upgraded with time. It is the same with drawing, start with the basics. All you really need is pen and paper to learn the fundamentals. Don't let lack of funds for expensive gear stop you from starting to learn a new skill. Okay, last question. Will you ever show your first doll repaint? You can actually already see it in my face-up journey video, where I talk about how I started painting face-ups, the struggles and motivations. Have a look, I hope you will like it. Alright guys, this is it. As you saw, I finished the illustration at my local brunch place. A change of scenery is always good and I love doing that every now and then. So what do you think of her? I hope that you like this little angel. Next month I will continue with Libra, so feel free to throw your suggestions in the comment section below. But yeah, this is all I have for today. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, comment and share. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll talk to you again really soon. Bye!